Well, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to Zwift Community Live Broadcast of the Zwift Racing League. We're in with the Americas for the semi-finals out on the Rolling Highlands. Three laps, 32K. We saw the European racing earlier this afternoon. And now for the Americas women's, we're going to be checking in with Division One. A's and C's, and we'll be checking in with the A category for Division One for the men, and maybe a couple of the other categories if we can jump across to them. Dave, we saw a few breakaways. We also saw plenty of sprint finishes. Any, um, you know, the America's women's, they've jumped out on course, and actually what's interesting is I didn't think that they were going to put on, like, right from the get-go, any kind of craziness, but you gave me a little prediction that there is – the certain Canadian upstart that might be doing something, <laughs> and she's not proving us incorrect, it looks like. That's not a surprise. So Tiffany Penner on the attack already. I'm looking into my crystal ball, I'm imagining. So Tiffany is racing without any of her teammates, I believe. So she's going to make it a tough, tough day out there for the rest of the squad. She won't herself, Nathan, be able to collect enough points, I wouldn't think, as the ZRL WTRL semifinals are points-based. We've got a team time trial, but Tiffany is a one-woman wrecking crew. There's no doubt about it. So I'll be interested to see kind of a flashback of Nadia Gantova, actually, in my mind, of an exceptional world-class athlete jumping in with her local in a lot of ways, right? This is sort of the – because Tiffany was one of the riders in Zwift games that made it into the final 10 in the unbelievably competitive sprint segment of Zwift games. So she's an up-and-comer, no doubt about it. She definitely is. Jump right down in with Tiffany. It looks like Rachel Lieberman and Megan Rathwell. They made a move actually in the lead-in, it looked like. And then over the top of the breakaway Bray, they were looking to uh, create some more separation. This then got the response from M. Nyquist and Bronson here. To look at the jump across through the uh, misty forest there as they head on over toward um, the sprites area, as you can see here, of Scotland and uh, the old school Stonehenge looking area. It's going to be ATP shutting things down toward the front. Well, floor zone Stella now also trying to get a little bit of a break. This is an interesting situation. I think Riot are on a little bit of a back foot here. It's essentially... ATP versus Riot out there today with a little bit of synergy mixed into the, uh, into it all here with Penner out there. So we'll keep eyes on how things develop uh, throughout the race. Now, you know, not a whole lot of riders that show up, but racers make the race here, Dave. And the fact the way that they're riding this makes it quite interesting, actually, because of how they're throwing these attacks down. You had said earlier during your, your, the European broadcast that when you have less riders, sometimes that opens up more opportunities. Oh, absolutely, Nathan. It's interesting because this front move completely neutralizes itself. The only thing that really is a dynamic is that Penner is up the road here by herself. But those two, as far as the points go, when you look at Lieberman and Rathwell, basically uh, take each other out of the mix. So that's what you call marking up in that front group, watching that gap going out to six seconds. So they're out on lap one proper. But absolutely, Nathan, going back to your point, when you start with a group this size and a lot of this has to do with the fact that um, we really have, uh, with ZRL, racing ended in the regular season, ended in February. A lot of athletes, I mean, phew, the numbers from Zwift games are mind-blowing when you see the just the sheer volume of people that participated had fun and uh, what a huge success that was and a breakthrough event for riders like Tiffany Penner. So we've shifted now back into with the time zone changes and everything going on. This was the time when things stabilized enough that we could get our ZRL finals underway. Next week is the team time trial, but here tonight, uh, these two riders did a really good job of covering this move of Penner talking about Rathwell and Lieberman. Looks like you got the guys out on course as well. It's three laps of racing here on Rolling Highlands, but there's uh, about 5K from the pens until you get out onto lap one proper here. That's Neil Freyette racing. Good to see Neil. He was uh, in a uh, had kit a today. fantastic season. That's interesting. You know, that really is. He's a uh, different team for him than normal. Good catch, Nathan. They, he fits that squad really well. 
the yeah, well, mindset of Velocio. He was riding for Velocio. I think. I think he's. Huh. Now I. I, I feel like he's he jumped around for a, a little based. bit. You know, here and there, yeah. and so I, I do remember him being in this Velocio kit before. But I'm not sure if that's the only kit he rode in before being picked up by Saris for the top end, you know, Grand Prix type racing um, or the Zwift games. So uh, it's interesting. We'll see how things go. I mean, as far as a kick goes to the line, you can't go past Fred as a favorite out there today is what we saw him do in the Zwift games in race number two uh, in that epic race. You know, this is this is hands down i would say out of everybody in this field how can freyat not be the out and out favorite i'm going to take a closer look at that start list but neil had a tremendous uh, echelon racing league uh results as well as i remember him uh you know being up on the podium he and brian duffy jr really out of north america i'd say nathan were the two strongest riders representing their respective squads 100 percent I think uh, though that definitely is the two that went head to head in that, as well as uh, for the national championships, taking second place there uh, against Brian Duffy Jr. It was a lot closer than I think some realized. Jeremy Ray's here as well, also riding for Velocio. We saw him in the Canadian national championships making some serious moves. Velocio's got quite the crew that is showing up out here today, uh, but the truth is there is also a lot of hitters in this America's East. This is definitely the stronger of the uh, zones when it comes to the Americas. I race in the West, and we take we, we get a little bit envious of this East with the kind of firepower that is in here. So it's going to be an interesting one tonight. Draft is also here, obviously. Velocio, uh, we see SWAT, Optimum. Yeah, Luke um, Nathan. Adrian Alvarado. The Chilean rider on Wahoo Lacole also taking the start. So I can see why uh, this is a very strong group with a lot of depth. So these guys will be happy to get a great race in here tonight. Warren Mir, we're looking at. The draft team also looks really strong tonight. Yeah, interesting to see Mir sitting so far back. And I think with Warren so far back, it definitely speaks to uh, the calmness right now that there's not a whole lot of panic knowing that anything that tries to make any kind of moves, nobody is, uh, everybody who's really going to be marked in this field is not making any moves that anybody's worried about, I think. I mean, you see where Warren Muir is, and I have a feeling, you know, there's a few riders that you know, if they're not concerned, most likely nobody else should be concerned. That's a great point, Nathan. When you look around and see the strongest riders still in the group you're in, you can take a, a, a sigh of relief, I'd say, and, and recognize that everything will be okay. And right now, that, that certainly is the, the situation in this group here as we <clears throat> go to the split screens, and you can see that that three-rider women's breakaway. I'm kind of looking into the tea leaves, Nathan, and I don't know that this three-rider group comes back out here today i don't think we do see a reset i realize we're only a third of the way into the race distance wise but i think this is gone there's enough horsepower up there and there's it, all of the dynamics tell me for both teams they can kind of let this go without having to full-on panic and blow themselves let I me mean, yeah the gap is going out now to 35 seconds i think well you know rachel lieberman also racing out of Seattle, like Neil Freyette. She's a woman that this course might not be severe enough for her. We'll see what she can do. And Megan Rathwell, really well situated to have a great ride out here today. The consistent Canadian suits this course well. So um, it's an interesting situation. It really is. I mean, you could just watch these three women race and uh, have a, a dynamic performance in front of you. Is uh, I, I'm still thinking that Tiffany Penner is the woman to beat, and I'll continue to think that. I mean, I, I truly believe that her trajectory is going to take her to the very top of esports if she decides to continue her commitment to it, Nathan. Uh, she is that good, no doubt about it. Here's another woman who's made a huge commitment to esports, Anna Russell, just off the front of that chasing path. Peloton. So yeah, Riot making some moves. Uh interesting move here from Anna. I think she's wanting 
a difficult race out here today. I don't think she wants to just sit in the pack. And now that they've gotten enough of a gap and she's got what seems to be, you know, she doesn't want to leave this to a sprint, I guess, also. So Smith, alongside of Nyquist, they're going to sit in while Anna attacks the group and tries to get on her own and force ATP to do a little bit of work out there. It looks like, and the rest are just going to sit on. Look at Smith, Nyquist. They're sitting pretty still at this point. They're going to work together this day in that national champions kit that uh, she earned this year. Masters national champion, M. Nyquist. Good to see. And now it's all back together. Now, I don't think that's going to impact, like you said, up what's going on up front. I, I 100% agree with that. There's plenty of motivation uh, up front. And really, you're right. Penner is the one to beat up there with what we've seen from her so far this year. Top 10s at Swift Games, they're not easy to come by, right? So. Um, now the question is, how does Riot play the rest of this in order to get the better of these four ATP riders that are back here? Because they've got three that are back here in this group. So Anna's going to be doing some math, and her math seems to say attack, attack, attack. Yeah, so, I mean, it, it is interesting, Nathan. It's a, it is absolutely a numbers game. I always laugh when you hear people say, it's not a numbers game. Well, absolutely it is. The numbers are the points that you're going to earn at the finish line. Today is a scratch race. There's no bonuses along the way. But remembering that, that M. Nyquist Stars and Stripes jersey, she's on the Riot team, right? So they uh, right now got to be feeling pretty good about the situation. Yeah, and now Lieberman looking to attack the group here that is up front, this lead breakaway group. Penner closes it down, Rathwell sitting on. And between the three of them, Lieberman doesn't necessarily want a sprint. I think Penner's got the best kick out of all of them, most likely. Rathwell's kind of the uh, jack of all trades i think here that she Agreed. can play just about any any role amongst these ladies and then you know, lieberman just wants that steady ttt ride her own race i'm actually surprised to see what the numbers look like for rachel lieberman she's better than you might think in her 15 second power 9.8 that's not bad that's right in the middle of this group as well i think I think the highest you're going to see is Anna. Oh, no, M. Nyquist at 11.9. Excuse me. It's Anna Russell at 11.8 for 15 second power. It's Megan Florizone, who on paper is the only uh, athlete over to go over 12 watts per kilo for 15 seconds. Tiffany Penner, though, pretty close to that at 11.5. But here's a good look at that comparison. You're right, though, right down the middle for Megan Rathwell. She's good in every single category there. Tiffany Penner, you can see that 11.5. And I, I think that that number might be uh, something we see increasing here over the next season as Tiffany Penner will move up into that very, very elite group. 100%. And uh, I think uh, it'll be interesting to see what Rathwell wants to do to play her cards against the kick of Penner out here today because amongst the Riot ladies, she's got to take down these other two uh, or Riot has to get the better of all four riders behind. I mean, obviously, Rathwell's got the better of uh, that entire group at this point, but Lieberman being up here throws a little bit of a wrench in the spokes of that plan now at this point because that neutralizes or even gets the better of Riot if Lieberman can beat out Rathwell here. Right. You know, I mean, it's interesting. There is no clear pathway for any of these three women. I think that Penner is the one that would be happiest if it came down to a sprint or would be the best positioned if it came down to a sprint. But I think it's really going to come down to which one of these women wants the win more out of this group. On 20-minute power, they're all close enough. It's going to come down to desire without any doubt. As you take a look now at uh, a solo breakaway going clear, it's going to be Hennessy, the draft rider. And opening up a gap out here. We've seen breakaways work today. Will Loudon was a phenomenal performance. I don't remember the time gap when Will finished, but it was up into the more than half a minute that he had at the line. They actually, that old Fisher cut bait. They cut bait, just let him go in that one where we saw other races where breakaways would get advantages, come back, and you know, some thrilling finishes out here. But they're not going to play around with Tennessee at all. So it's going to be cover and kill. They shut this one down. Is that going to be optimum in green out here? 
Uh, HTFU actually, Rule Five. HTFU Rule, yeah, and Green, excuse here. me. Yeah, so they're uh, making some moves. It looks like uh, Deponte Smith is there for them as well in the green. So um, Christoph Laporte's there though for Optimum as well as this is going to be Frechette. Now I wanted to highlight something here real quickly. Let's see if I can find him again because we actually have not. This is the first time. I've actually seen this in game. It deserves its own little badge, honestly. Um, if we do uh, find it here, here it is. I have not seen the gold Tron in game once yet. There it is. One in the Zwift games. That is only Zwift games race winners that are able to get Very the golden cool. Tron or the overall winner. Uh, and so first time I've actually ever seen it used in a race in game. Great. Now, to Neil, see it, actually. Neil, who uh, lives in Seattle, Washington, he actually has a real gold uh, Wahoo bike as well. Doesn't he? Um, or he should. I think or does he just win the gold Tron in game? In just his the gold Tron in game. The overall winner of the entirety of the Zwift games, uh, which would be Freddie Ovette would get the golden wahoo bike actually so golden tron i was hoping the reserved. gold tron came with that in the in real life uh, <laughs> to match version. to match absolutely so you know what you you freaked me out a little bit when you said christoph laporte i think it's charles oliver laporte christoph oh being the duh. yeah of visma course writer. yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. the like, visma writer thought, yeah so, Right. No, Christoph Report's not there. <laughs> At first, I thought, oh my gosh, that's no. exciting. Christoph no, Report taking he's a little not. time Prime off mistake. from the classics. No, yeah, okay. it's, because, it's because I was watching the classics, I think. And then I just like my. You saw C. Laporte? Yeah, I saw yeah. C. Laporte. <laughs> and I'm like, well, I guess Christoph Laporte is here. <laughs> so my. That sounds bad. like me. That's exactly what I would do. Look at all the orange numbers popping right now, Nathan. Only in a group like this do you see this kind of power. That's going to dim the power grid all over the United Kingdom right now is HDFU Ryder Haney on the attack. A lot of green jerseys all over the front here. Yeah, Haney continues to make the moves here, it looks like. As uh, his teammate looks to come across, is he dragging everybody up to? No, he's not. He's got a little bit of a gap, just enough that it makes sense here to try and go across to his teammate. They back off the 2.6. Michaela there from Team Draft maybe getting just. Nope, the meters are going out. You can see it at the bottom of the screen there. This is a good little bit of a kick here to try and go away. Now, if they can work together. You know, it's a tough spot to make this kind of a move into the breakaway break. And Boy, Amy says, forget it. That wasn't even a question. What? Right. What's going on here? No, I thought, I guess there's just like, no, you I was go with ahead. you. I was expecting they would work together, but he's like, I'm going at a completely different speed than anybody else on the planet right now. So I'm just going to continue on with this as we take a look at the front of the bike race here. Well, it's a significant attack out here. So let's see what the methodology is. Is this to put pressure on draft or maybe Velocio here? It's certainly interesting to see HTFU being the aggressor at this point. I love it. Yeah, and uh, looking through the pack, who's going to bring this back? It does look like it's going to be West from Alpha. We are uh, now at this point, 6.2 from them in the front. Now Hennessy here from Team Draft, 6.5, it looks like. And this was the rider who early on was making moves as well. P. Wong there also from Velocio up toward the front. But really, it's not who's on the front when you hit the bottom of the breakaway break. It's who takes the front about halfway up. After these couple little turns, who hits the front when it comes into a straightaway, as we're familiar with from Canadian National Championships, is usually the one that's going to come over the top uh, in first place over the line, as well as with any kind of speed as they hit the other side. They're going to have uh, still plenty of landscape to work with, though. Two to go, two to go, as they come over the top of this here. As at the front now, it is going to be Alvarado from the Condors, who takes over. Now backs right on off, knowing that he's not going much anywhere. Burrito's being popped. As they just collected one. I think everybody's just trying to get rid of them. Maybe cause a little bit of damage if they can. And again on the front. It is going to be a dirt rider. Who takes over. All right. Really I'd say status quo right now. Not a lack of activity at all. But a 
very, very attentive. Peloton not giving any leash out here. As riders continue to try, though, as they get that 12-pound sledgehammer out and wail away on the front. It looks like two more riders starting to exit stage left right now. So let's see what happens with that. This race really hasn't had a moment where they back off out here. Nathan talking about the guys. They decided they wanted to race hard from the flag. And that's exactly what we've seen out here. I think we're going to see stunningly high uh, watch per kilo efforts after this one is done and dusted. Dirty Ducks making their mark on this one now, Nathan. That's going to be Waldron that we're looking at rolling off the front here. Tyler Waldron making a little bit of a move. Nicely done by him, it looks like here. With uh, Haney, who's been very aggressive up to this point. FKU, not familiar with Caillou. Let me see who this Got a lot of charge is, on his... Uh, his energy bar is fully loaded. <laughs> you know, you can, you, I, not that he would do it for the broadcast or even know that he was, but if they, if you set your, um, your FTP really high in game, you can like fake out the energy bar and make it think that you got tons <laughs> of energy left. <laughs> so, but uh, it all depends on whether or not you use, or if you set it really low, you can make it seem like you've got no energy left. If your FTP is not right, that set seems correctly. like more the tactic. Yeah, right. It seems like right. It would be more deceive. Uh, you'd be deceiving uh, your competitors a little higher level out there. This is Caillou of the SWAT team that we're looking at, guys. Out on lap number two now. Each lap proper at nine k today. The pot now a little bit of a move from him. This is going to be the now as far as teams and their aggression so far. It really has been. Uh, HCFU that has been the main aggressors that we've seen so far today. I feel like we've seen a lot of these green jerseys on the front, trying to make moves, trying to break things apart. Velocio, interesting enough, I've not seen a whole lot from them. And that's not shade. That's actually probably that's, up to this point, just keeping things pretty intelligent. I feel like uh, the lesson that we learned through the European racing today, Nathan, was patience is a virtue out here. Uh, you know, there's always going to. <laughs> I got to love Mike Morris's avatar here. But uh, so. Is that uh, actually definite... Roglic in a Velocio t shirt? <laughs> like, if you were to take no. the glasses, no, it's not, but it looks like. Right. I feel like he looks a little bit like Primo's. If you like, uh, you could take that off and be like, is that Primo's underneath there? Yeah, yeah. So here we go, though. It looks like Velocio is starting to activate the squad, Nathan. A lot more yellow jerseys up near the front. That's Mike's team that we're looking at right now. I've always thought Velocio looked like one of the coolest teams to be on. They've got a great uh, team ethos there. Newell here toward the front, it looks like. Haney again going. DuPont Smith also from HCFTU. Green jerseys making their moves again. Continuing, they they really want to get a breakaway situation. They are not sitting around. Freyette now goes though. The moment that Neil Freyette makes a move, I think it's you're going to start changer. getting some panic here from the rest of the crew. Absolutely, Nathan. I mean, you just and here you go. This is the big, big moment. So this was something that was clearly planned. So right now in Seattle, I would imagine there are lights flickering all over Ballard. Is uh, Neil Freyette is attacking? He's got his teammate Ray with him. So they're kind of taking one of the HTFU playbook uh, moments and take turning it on them. This is exactly what HTFU was doing, but now Velocio doing it with a little more elbow grease. Yeah, and now Jeremy Ray goes up and over the top, it looks like here. Great to see both of these riders working really hard together now at this point. You put and and look at that double burrito. That was well planned. Jeremy Ray used his at the back. Freyette, you know, led things out. So not any, nobody could draft off of Jeremy Ray. Then Jeremy Ray goes to the front, Freyette. Hits his burrito. Nobody can draft off them. Immediately, these guys got seven seconds. Boom. Like, and, out and, go the and, lights. And kind it's of a rare. Punch. 
Yeah, and it's rare, Nathan, that you see the burritos really having an impact, and it's the racers that are making the impact, but they're using that burrito for everything it's worth, and this is what you get, two of the big stars in this group going clear, significant moment. It's interesting, Nathan, as you look at them on the rider comparison chart here as teammates, what they're hoping is to see big numbers from the other guy as well, because that's exactly, <laughs> they need each other, and they know that in a major way. Look at what Neil Freyak can do 16 watts per kilo when he is full on sprinting he doesn't have a weak link that's for sure nor does his teammate jeremy ray so two very strong riders synced up they're simpatico they know what they're doing this is a hundred percent a game plan and nathan watching this gap it went out too early to say it went out so fast i don't know if anybody could even respond to it like honestly i mean that were that that went so quickly and now at this point if there isn't a concerted effort behind this is game over nobody can do anything about it i i'm afraid to say nathan that these two might just be talented enough that this stays away it looks like swat's going to get luke uh jubil up there to start chasing but uh, this is a major problem, even though the gap is only at 11 or 12 seconds. And I'm trying to think now, is the last race that we covered in European, Nathan, where we had riders that opened up a very similar gap to this. They ended up coming back to the peloton late in the race and then attacking again to win. Help refresh my memory. Who, who was winning on that one? Uh, the last race that we did. Yeah, uh, uh, it, it was, was a unique situation. Johan Norin sure. went with Yorkland from That's Team it. SZ, and then Norin attacked over the top of the corkscrew and held to the line by just After, a second. But they had been caught. They did get right? caught. So, yep, and then attacked again right. from the pa- from the pack. Yep. So it was now, an entirely. I was thinking about that on my walk. Now where they I was like, gained well, I, their. They gained their gap here, though. Like decisively compared to Norin and Bjorklund, they gained 15 seconds over two kilometers. I mean, I they exactly are going that. crazy hard compared to the pack right now. I think the pack threw in the towel the moment they got 10 seconds from what it looks like to me, or they said, let's see what we can do on corkscrew. And perhaps we're going to see massive orange numbers, but if they don't bring this back to five seconds over the top of corkscrew and then through breakaway Bray, I think they're going to start racing for third. I think it was Peter Tosh that says anything that you can do, I can do better. And I think at this point, these Velocio guys, Nathan, would feel that way about the chase. So once they catch, so they're going to stabilize this at around 20 seconds right now. And I think they're just going into their rhythm at this point. That's going to be Jeremy Ray taking a monster pull right now. But these two riders are going to be putting on a clinic and courage out here today in Scotland. Nathan, my anticipation is that they don't come back. To be honest with you, we're down to 12, we'll make it 11 and a half K of racing. You're looking at two superstar athletes. Neil Freyette was one of the strongest riders in Zwift games. It was premier racing was the team. I, I was with him in Seattle, Nathan, when we did that coverage of, as you would remember well, the final day's coverage of Echelon Racing League. He is a true gentleman. I mean, a real class act. It was uh, it was a blast getting to know Neil Freyette. And you can see the support he has in that Seattle community. We were up there in Metier, but his premier racing squad there in Seattle is a top notch crew of racers who they've got a really good thing going. And this is going to be one of the low, if they don't win, to t- I, know, I don't see that happening. Yeah, Jeremy Ray is definitely one who can hold these kind of watts all the way to the line, too. We saw similar attacks from him in the past. A little bit upset on a very similar course for him, though. Uh, But I think having the extra firepower between the two of them, it's just enough. It's going out to to 22 seconds now, though, through the corkscrew. When does Neil pull? (laughs) Yeah. Jeremy's taking a a three-minute pull. Well, no, Neil was just on the front a moment ago. He was, was he? okay. Yeah, he was on the front. Jeremy attacked, uh, not attacked, but did take the pull over the top here. I think Freyat's actually getting a little bit of rest now at this point. But, um, you know, looking here with the riders in here you green, go. rule five, I think they're the ones that are going to be on the aggression to try and bring this back. I think the rest of the pack have kind of called the game now at this point, perhaps. I mean, Alpha, though... 
Alpha have also been pretty quiet up to this point, and we haven't seen much from them. They're they've been extremely strong in these uh, East races. I'm actually a little bit surprised we haven't seen anything from Alpha so far. Yeah, and riders like Adrian Alvarado on Wahoo Lacole with Travis Samuel here as well. There's still a lot of talent back in this group, but I think that just the reality of how talented these two are, how motivated they are, I don't think that they're going to be seen again out here today. And that only benefits their teammates sitting back in that group as well. Taking a look at who else on Velocio is here, Mike Morris, Aaron Newell. So riders on that team right now are getting a, uh, a chariot ride at this point through the middle part of the course is these guys are going to be heading out on the final lap of racing now with 20. Yeah. I, I thought at around 20 seconds, they actually, the guys on the front here for and Ray, not backing off, but I think that that was a marker that they were looking for. And now they can just ride their race to the finish line here. Well, not now quite that Lucci, easy though, pushing, you know, they brought back five seconds pretty quickly here. Well, he's attacking out of the peloton, yeah. isn't he? Yeah, yeah, he is. He wants to go across. It looks like Jeremy Ray is doing four point three on the front now at this point. Trying not to. Man, this is this is tough. This is this is interesting. Here, are they are they going to be able to hold it's on? Are a they different to, bike race. This is this is really getting interesting now at this point. Freyette now Ray Freyette now heading to the front. Luke is now brought this back. Five seconds have been eliminated from their lead in the last K. I don't think that the group can keep that up, though. I, I'm not sure that they can. I, I, no, and I, uh, yeah, and I think that you're going to see those moments because that was a real power surge coming from Luke Gilbo. But watch how it goes back out to 20 again. That's my anticipation here. Is these guys are steady eddies on the front, and what they're seeing is just discombobulation back in that peloton where riders get frustrated. They surge out of the group, but that's not bringing them back systematically, which is the only way you're going to reel these guys back in. The old how do you eat an elephant one bite at a time? Well, that's how you're going to bring these guys back if you want to, and that's just not happening. Yeah, as you can see, Jeremy Ray heads back to the front, six watts per kilogram. Look at the heart rates here. <laughs> they, they're like tempo <laughs> seriously 159 beats per minute ray here 157 i think that That's they're insane. leaving something in the in the tank oh absolutely too. believe it 100 percent, nathan these guys are not at 98 percent running it in the red zone they're as you just said their heart rates aren't even at 160 they've got 15 percent more to give this is an 85 percent effort they're riding at right now Mm, Freyat rolling through nicely timed as you can see there as uh, he rolls through with speed 50 kilometers per hour absolutely making sure it's in full TT mode between the two back uh, back over to the ladies here as these two are off the front with something similar the eight women now uh, starting to take on their postcard section. This is the final time through postcard for them. They got a minute and one seconds in the breakaway. Now at this point, Rachel Lieberman, Penner, and Rathwell, and they're starting to look at each other a little bit. It's no longer four to five watts per kilogram around the front. Rather, this 3.4 steady tempo situation. Stella from ATP, you can see none of the breaks here really able to make any kind of moves now at this point between them. So uh, it does look like they are waiting for the next attacks between ATP and Riot here. And those are the only teams that have really shown up besides Penner here, who's already made the break up front. Going to try and win it for Synergy outright. That's just going to neutralize. That's really not um, that. Yeah, I, I don't think. Now, hmm, is it a one point difference? Pride. I have to take a look. I think that there isn't anything well, that it can do to ATP, though, and Riot, though. Is it? Because if it's only a one point difference from first to second, then it doesn't do anything. Do you know what I'm saying? If it's more than that, absolutely. then it does steal a little bit of something. But I don't think it really does anything because I believe it's only a one point difference. So I think to sum that up, Nathan, it really becomes now Riot and ATP. They're racing against each other. They don't necessarily need to worry about Tiffany in this situation. I mean, Although, if they I beat Tiffany to the possible. line, they could gain an extra point, and, right? Like if they put and, Tiffany and between met, them. Right. Well, good point. And, uh, and I haven't met a racer, Nathan, in this scenario that doesn't race to win all out. 
there's just no such thing in my mind as saying, I, I don't need to beat her, but I need to beat her, that kind of thing. You can't be, that's just not how it works. They'll be racing to win. <laughs> like, that's question. just not how it works. Yep, that's totally true. I love that. that <laughs> nope, that's just not, that equation does not exist. <laughs> I understand why you could think that or say that, but that's not real. So. <laughs> Those equations you, I think you'd agree with that, though, Nathan. Yeah, 100%. You, can't be you that just want to win. And, you just right. want to win. Yeah. That's just how it goes in, in these racing situations. The burrito power ups. Now, this is, you can see all three of them use their burrito at the same time. There's no tactic there or anything. They're just like, look, we want the feather that we get when we go oh, through God. this banner, and we're all going yeah. to collect the feather. So let's get rid of our burritos. Like a, it, just a group think. <laughs> There, right? I promise I won't use this burrito on you. You don't use yours on me. We can all walk away Happy. unburritoed. <laughs> unburritoed. <laughs> we can all walk away unburritoed. No one's getting burritoed here as they have a burrito into the for a burrito leaves day. everyone hungry. That's the biblical <laughs> saying. Oh, it's good. I, it's good. I've become a huge Tiffany Penner fan, Nathan. It's always great. That's one of the things about America is that we have found some world-class athletes racing here in the evenings on Tuesdays. And this is a really good example of that. Tiffany lives up in Manitoba, Canada, uh, works as a scientist up there. And much like, boy, Nathan, you want to look at this group of women, the IQs of this group are sky high, aren't they? There's definitely something about the quality of human being that uh, loves racing on Zwift. 100%. There's no weak link. Very, very true. As uh, we see, uh, yeah, Penner also, I think, studying right now at this moment too, isn't she? I believe. As... I wouldn't be surprised. Like yeah, still in graduate school yeah, I think while she's working gra as a graduate lab school or scientist. something yeah. along those lines. Yeah, so... Yeah. Um, now, I'd what I'm interested, interested to know. see is what kind of math she's done that she's going to work out to try and beat these two as they're about to hit corkscrew. I have a feeling Penner doesn't like to leave it to the line usually from what I've seen. I have a feeling that this little ramp up here is going to go into an acceleration in just a moment. Now, that's not, the, in my opinion, not the exact best way to go about this, but she is the type of rider that likes to just muscle it. And she's like following your cue, Nathan. As you can see her up out of the saddle right now doing exactly what Nathan said, but she's met her match with Rachel Lieberman. Rachel Lieberman has been really fun to watch. I love her origin story about showing up in Arizona on Mount Lemon and just dusting a bunch of cat two dudes who told her, you might want to look into bike racing. And certainly that was true. Rachel Lieberman on the front, Penner's second wheel, Megan Rathwell right there. Let's see what the Canadian Rathwell can pull off the riot rider moving past Penner. So they're putting Penner in a spot of bother right now as Rathwell getting up under that wheel here of Lieberman. Did Penner let Rathwell close the gap or was she struggling? That's my question here. I think she backed off a little you, bit and then Rathwell she's doing a little the gap. Kavinsky. Ah, yeah, she's positioning herself maybe. to be on the back. Has, to Penner, start the has Penner learned a thing or two? I wonder because oh, yeah, I mean, kid. she was up in 192 beats per minute. So I'm not going to, I'm not going to say that that was all tactic, but she definitely you know, well, I'm hurting. Let Rathwell do the work. I think she wouldn't have got dropped, but I think she was like, I'm hurting right now. I'm going to let somebody else do this work. Why don't we finish what we got a years before we started on mine? It's all about saving everything you can for the finish. It's Penner now in blue up to the front. These are the three riders just to create the race scenario for you the points are going to be critical here as moving back onto the front is rachel lieberman so if it comes down to a pure sprint you think penner is someone getting out in front of it i'm thinking lieberman i don't know after Pe saying that, lieberman, that means it's rathwell she right had a really good kick just a moment ago though i don't know if rathwell can match any of these it's ladies maybe she can and you never know you know the truth is i haven't seen these three ladies go up against each other in quite a long time so there could be some surprises of what people have been working on too great i completely agree and nathan the more i focus on one rider or another it makes me think oh that opens the door for someone like rathwell i would never sleep on megan rathwell a lot of experience very savvy i'm going to say that if you want to talk about in real life nathan the riot rider has the most experience on how to finish a bike race and that's exactly what we're talking about here you go penner is going to hit out it looks like penner's going all in pushing the chips in the middle of the table all right nathan it is on like donkey kong as penner's going to try to make a statement here 
Here goes Penner up and over the top. Look at Looks Lieberman. like first, but it's going to be Lieberman sitting on, sitting on, sitting on. It's just going to be a lead-out train. It is. It's a lead-out train at this point. Penner's going to have to go second kick. She's going to have to kick again to win this race because Lieberman now goes head-to-head head with her. It's going to go right to the line, but Lieberman might have got the better. Here comes the second kick. Oh, last Lieberman effort. Just barely gets it there. It looked to me like Lieberman. Oh, man. Back in the Ooh, API is going to so, tell us the truth, but I think, David, I think that you're was right. it. And, Nathan, you talked about the scenario. It was the perfect ATP scenario there for Lieberman as she gets Penner after her, which gives one more point ahead of Riot. So advantage ATP right now. We'll see how that, that means that the Riot ladies are going to need to rush this one. That's going to be Natalie Smith up on the front here. So a lot of pressure on Riot to get the good placings here. It's going to be very important for them. They have to win this one outright, I think, between all three of them. And Nyquist, though, she's got such a kick on her lately. But here goes Nyquist. this early kick has been really go coming back to bite a lot of riders. You've got to win zone, though. right at this and moment right here is the moment to go. And now Nyquist knows that. Nyquist kicks, and it's her and Florizo, Florizo to the line. Nyquist, Nyquist, can she hold on? em has been working Huge. on this one, and she's got it. It looks like it's going to be M Nyquist, followed up by Anna Russell. I don't know if it's going to be enough, though. Followed by Anna Russell behind. I'm sorry, Florizone taking that fifth place. Russell for sixth. That's the difference maker, though. That Florizone spot right there. I think might you're right. Be I think you're right. The issue, yep. That's mm. huge. Florizone to 12 watts per kilo out there. And uh, wow, got to give M. Nyquist credit. She's getting better and better and certainly improving her finish. So, Nathan, question becomes how many seconds do these guys have? Is uh, If it's more than. Yeah, it's more than 10. It's lights out. Yeah, they had this almost 30 goal, coming goal over standard. the top. Uh, we did see Adrian Alvarado actually making some moves behind uh, and trying to come across. I actually have a, I think I pulled up a little bit of a replay of what was going, or at least hit the replay button there to try and grab what was going on for a moment. I'll see if I can find it. Uh, well, I think it's all we accidentally just recorded nothing but the ladies' race, so we'll just leave that alone. <laughs> Anyways, Friday here, no, though it looks like 5.7 watts per kilogram toward the so, front. Alvarado, though, was trying to make some moves to get away. I don't think it was necessarily to come across, I think AJ Alvarado was just trying to break the group behind to get that third place solo at least for WLC. Boy, I'm wondering, Nathan, do these two sprint against each other? Do you, if you're with a teammate at this point, probably just for the kicks and giggles? Yeah, right? I think so. I mean, <laughs> now do because you see behind here up the two what I'm talking about points. here? There's Haney and Alvarado. They're going to hold it, I think. I think they're going to hold. It's almost a separate bike race. Yeah, I mean, this is third. a breakaway. That's a, that's a situation right. for third there behind. Jeremy Ray, he's going to look to get the better. It looks like uh, Freyette. Is Freyette even going to care? I don't think so. I think Freyette's got the kick no if he wanted to. to but... Uh, He's going to let Jeremy take this down. They're no. not battling. This isn't a battle. This is not at all. No, and, They're completely respecting each other here. And I think when you have the gold Tron, you're already feeling like you're king of the world, so you like to give little gifts. Alvarado says goodbye for the Condors. <laughs> oh, Haney saved his burrito. Mistakes were made. 100% mistakes <laughs> were made. He might get caught at the line. Here comes Newell. Not quite. Not quite. Morse now right. going to cross the line there for Fifth, I believe that was. So it's a great day for Velocio. Velocio First, the one, two. And fifth. That's a big day for Velocio. Well, well done. Holy cow. Well, they're a team that knows how to team time trial as well. And that's the next stop here on the ZRL World Tour. Our semifinals here. It's two pronged. So today's scratch race, all the points waiting at the finish line. And then we've got a team time trial next Tuesday. Getting a lot the of comments actually from uh, a lot of comments from chat letting us know how much people love the uh, the new Tron bike. That thing looks that thing does look pretty sweet. Sweet doesn't add it? me uh, to that list. <laughs> that thing is cool. Heading across over to the ladies. I think they're just finishing up in the C category. We may miss the finish. I did want to try and catch it for everybody. They're already around the corner though. As uh, it looks like we may, depending on where forces puts us here, but we'll get the results at least for everybody. I did want to try and give everybody a look at how things played out in the C category, but um, it was a little tough for us to have the multi-view up for you. 
But uh, let's go ahead and take a quick look at the results, though, for what we just saw take place, and then we'll see what we can do for that C category. I know we did have some people out there looking forward to that uh, specifically. But uh, good racing here in America. You know, I was, to be honest, I wasn't expecting um, how good of racing that they that, that that came at us actually here. We saw a lower, a little bit lower number of participation, but definitely ended up putting on a show. Agreed. The excitement was there for sure. And Rachel Lieberman, what a ride from, I feel like this was her moment, Nathan. You know, Rachel Lieberman has been there or thereabouts in all of the Zwift Grand Prix racing, and uh, we've seen her a lot. But on top of the table like this and a quality win as well, going to the line with Tiffany Penner and Megan Rathwell, that's got to feel great for Rachel Lieberman. So, Wins are always going to be judged by the quality of your competition. I know I've said that before, but that remains true. So this one has to feel a little bit sweeter for Rachel Lieberman for ATP on top of the table. Tiffany Penner, good for silver today for Avis Synergy. And then Megan Rathwell in at third. Emily Nyquist for fourth. Megan Florizone in fifth. Anna Russell up in sixth. It really was a two-team Donnybrook out here uh, for those points in our scratch race with Meredith Ul Moran in seventh. Stella eighth. Uh, Allie Bronson. Bronston in at ninth, and then Natalie Smith rounding out our top 10 for the A women, America's Division I Cup. See if we can jump across to the men for the A's here as uh, Jeremy Ray takes it down. Some familiar names up there. Great job by Velocio across the board today with Jeremy Ray, a monster win. You can see Neil Freyette, his teammate, uh, right there. So gold and silver for Velocio. Agent Alvarado for WLC in at third. It's Evan Haney, fourth today. Mike Morse, another Velocio rider getting into the top five. That ought to do the deal for them. Mitchell Kilborn in sixth. Aaron Newell, seventh. Warren Mir in eighth. B. Diddy, ninth. And then Jean-Christophe Billiot rounding out our top ten here. That's the A-men that we're looking at. In 11th, it was Carl Frechette. Pete West in 12th. Mike Gortmuller in 13th. Thomas Lejoy in 14th. J.P. Duran 15th today. On the day, it was Tyler Waldron. He got up there, made his name well-known. 16th. Joe in 17th. Matthew Mihalka in 18th. Big E 19th. And Noah DuPont-Smith Rounds out our top 20 in the A's today after 32K of racing out on the rolling highlands of Scotland. World-class course, world-class racing. And I agree with you, Nathan. That was, you know, you come into every race, I, I feel like I always do, with a bit of an anticipation of what we'll have ahead of us. And that exceeded my expectations for excitement tonight. So thank you to the racers for always putting on a show. Yeah, really nicely done. Um, we'll look to try and cover a little bit more of the um riders next week as we get into ttt it also is a little bit easier sometimes to jump across as we look across all the times uh across the boards i know that some of the riders are out there wondering where the b category etc is having trouble jumping across at the moment to the others we'll see if i can pull something off here real quickly but i think most of them have almost uh finished if they haven't finished already uh, for those B and C categories for the men's and the women's. Um, if it was just built in, uh, it would be a little bit different, but uh, having trouble getting into the fan views for those others. As, as, so just apologies to everybody on that that are looking specifically for those. But the A category is putting on a good show out here today, and uh, no doubt the C's and the B's for sure as well. Uh, also, um, we'll be here for the TTT next week. It's going to be a great uh, time trial and then the final racing is actually really interesting i was looking it up actually in between about its points race but back to back in the finals going one direction on glasgow crit course and then the new course that we saw in z racing on monday they're doing that in the they're doing it in the other direction so it's essentially glasgow crit twice for five laps but a points race that sounds torturous honestly like i remember doing five laps for a points race uh, in the past, specifically in the ZRL, and thinking, man, this is insane. And now to do it the other, like in two directions, you're definitely going to be crowning Crazy. some champions for when it comes to punchy sprint racing. 
So that'll be two weeks from now two that weeks you're talking now. about yeah, to wrap up yeah. this year, right? And as you were saying, team time trial next week. So, yeah, it's a two-pronged semifinal that leads us into the third and final week of racing in this mini block that we have to wrap up ZRL 23-24. And I guess then we'll turn the page and soon enough we'll be into 24-25. Yeah, and I also saw this cool little uh, video promo. Maybe I shouldn't be uh, jumping the gun too much. Top secret, but Sisu's coming for this summer. I saw somebody. <laughs> did you hear did a, my voiceover? Did a voiceover <laughs> that I was not expecting. All of a sudden, I'm watching this video. It's top secret video. I don't know if it's out publicly yet, but I'll, that's Dave's voice. What is? This sounds amazing. Like I was actually really impressed by that voiceover. That's funny. Um, I don't know, Nathan, it's very rare that I do any work in this arena without you being involved in the work or assigning me to it. But that was Matt from CSU. He's a great guy. And obviously, you knew that we are going to be doing uh, some really fun racing in yeah. the middle of the summer here. I, isn't CSU great? I, I really appreciate uh, you could say that about a lot of our teams out here. But uh, it's definitely a really wonderful community that you've built. Yeah, really, really awesome. Looking forward to that. Next thing, though, on ZCL tomorrow, the wrap. Uh, actually, going to have a conversation with Anna in a couple minutes here about what we're going to be talking about. Uh, make sure to tune in for that. And then next up after that will be Z Racing Lap It Up next week, Monday. So make sure to hit those follow buttons, subscribe to all that good stuff here on Zwift Community Live. Look to cover a couple of other uh, categories next week as some main focuses in the TTT as well, everybody. Don't worry about that. Uh, and then I'm actually, we'll actually be doing a broadcast live from ZHQ um, for the finals of ZRL. So that's going to be interesting. We'll see how we pull that one. Live, live from ZHQ. Yeah, but just nice. me by myself. I mean, there's not going to be anybody else hanging out. Not that I know of. Maybe I'll convince somebody to come talk to me while we're doing uh, But the you're going to be at you're going ZHQ. to be in Long Beach. Yeah, in Long Beach at ZHQ. Oh, yeah. that's interesting. So, and you can do that, Nathan, without all of your studio in Wisconsin. Well, we're, then. we're, you we're would pulling be able some to... strings. We're pulling some strings. Okay. So I'm not the one. There's some work going into making sure that that can happen. So obviously, Zwift, uh, take... ZRL as well as what happens at, uh, with Zwift Community Live and being able to provide all of you with a broadcast for the Zwift Racing League seriously. So cool. a big shout out to Zwift uh, and uh, Mr. Johnny Noblet and a few others there that are making that happen uh, so that we can serve you with a broadcast uh, while we are there. So pretty awesome of them. So, all right, everybody, though, thanks a lot for tuning in. We will see you tomorrow for the wrap and next week for the TTT and the Z Racing Lap It Up. As always, you can uh, hit those follow buttons and check out ZCLZwiftCommunityLive.com for any updates on what we're doing. And follow us on social medias as we do update you there as well. But from Dave and I, as always, right on. <laughs>